a lot of scientists now are thinking that the sharp rise in diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune disease, general inflammatory conditions could be tied to the rise in microplastics and pollutants in our environment. And I'm not trying to just jump on some bandwagon. I had testicular cancer when I was 23. So this for me is something I find important. So I've always been researching it, finding out as much as I can. Again, not an expert, but just trying to spread what I know. So what is a microplastic? So it's a small piece of plastic, less than five millimeters. But the only thing is they can break down in your body and then it turn to these tinier pieces called nanoplastics, which are like one nanometer, which is like a billionth of a meter. It's said that the average human consumes about a credit card's worth of plastic every week. That's pretty nuts. And obviously you defecate a lot of it out. But like I said, with these nanoparticles, they break off, they go into your bloodstream, they get lodged in your lungs, they go through your blood brain barrier, end up getting lodged in your brain. And so you can see how these cause a lot of problems, inflammation, they damage cells, they can turn your genes on and off, give you cancers or diseases that maybe you weren't going to get. They damage your blood vessels directly, they can damage your hormones, they can mess up how much estrogen, how much testosterone you make, they damage your sperm cells, your testicles, the list goes on. Some people don't care, but maybe just don't know because it's a slow death. You can't see it. You can't feel it until it's too late. It's not about now. It's about 5, 10, 20 years down the line. But also the buildup you might have had from most of your life. And on top of that, plastics love to attach themselves to things like heavy metals, lead, arsenic, mercury. So on top of the plastic being bad, it's bringing in all this other shit. So of course you can't avoid it completely. You'd be tearing your hair out trying to do that. But it's basically going back to the old school what your grandparents used to do just more natural things but if you don't want to nuance you don't want the whole thing the basic principle to adhere to is never mix food and plastic and especially with heat so food and plastic no but then with heat double no you don't want to mix that because it leaches into the food so for those who want a bit more detail i'll explain how so first in our food like fruits and vegetables now this is the, the crazy thing you would think they would be devoid of it but they absorb it through the soil the reason the soil has it is because they enrich or enrich the soil with something called biosolids or sewage sludge application. So basically putting sewage, human waste on the fields. Now this would be good because sewage sludge can, you know, remineralize the soil, can nourish the soil and make a good environment to, for the products to grow. But the only thing is the sludge they use is toxic. It's filled with heavy metals, bacteria, viruses, microplastics, metabolites of medication, estrogenic chemicals. The thing is it isn't even coming from us. A couple of years ago, UK environmental agency signed a contract to import 27,500 tonnes of sewage from Denmark. And the mad thing is, it's banned in Denmark. We're buying it from the country it's banned from, for being toxic. But for some reason, it's good for us. Same in America. A lot of farms in America, these people check their soil so toxic from this sewage sludge that they couldn't, they couldn't use it anymore. They had to sell the farm or close down the farm. The wind is almost all you hear now at Songbird Farms. Welcome to the ghost town of our dreams. Adam Nordell and his wife Johanna bought this farm in Maine in 2014 to raise organic produce and a family. Seven years later, they learned their land was riddled with chemicals called PFAS, a family of thousands of toxic compounds that last so long in the environment, they're known as forever chemicals. The toxins at Songbird Farm were traced to sludge. The solids left after wastewater is treated, spread there as fertilizer in the 1990s. I'll put a video of some interesting shit you can watch on this. There's actually a lady in Yorkshire. She saw it being put down. She goes and tested it, found it contained E. coli, all these bacteria, all these toxins. And um, we had it analysed and the results came back uh, a few days later. It was terrifying, really, really frightening. The analysis of Penny's sludge sample from 2019 found five pathogens, including salmonella. And they are cleaning it, of course, but they're not going to clean thoroughly. They don't care. And they're definitely not going to spend the money to clean for microplastics. It all comes down to money at the end of the day. So anyway, it goes into the soil and the roots and the vegetables have tiny cracks in them. And then they absorb this through the cracks and then you end up getting microplastics and toxins in your vegetables. They did find apples, things like turnips, carrots, things that are like root vegetables or things with deep roots. They tend to have more plastic residue and they found things like leafy vegetables lettuce kale cabbage things like that but they tend to have less so i'm not saying avoid carrots for the rest of your life but it's something to think about maybe try and go for more leafy greens so a second one easier one is packaged and processed food now i'm not saying don't ever eat a cheeseburger again who's going to do that but it's good to be aware if you're eating a lot of fast food a lot of packaged and processed food probably taking a lot of these endocrine disrupting chemicals microplastics so one way is that just the packaging itself made of plastic where they handle the product with plastic gloves, machinery, that can contaminate the food. And then you've got polystyrene boxes, you've got like pizza boxes coated in anti-grease coating or whatever the type of material they use. All this stuff leaches into the food. But then there's also stuff you buy, like 
never buy a fat you know plastic jar because fat and microplastic go hand in hand or they like each other things like coconut oil butter olive oil any kind of oil or sauce or whatever try and get in glass and things like tin goods you know slime bpa all these kind of like anything packaged and processed to try and minimize it you know buy loose fruit and veg you don't need to buy one broccoli wrapped in plastic so yeah generally avoiding packaged and processed foods they did a study of these people who were eating a lot of fast food and they found they had high levels of these estrogenic chemicals and when they stopped they found that the chemicals had gone down again and onto the kitchen so anything you cook with or used to cook or store food you want to replace it you want to move things into glass mason jars don't use plastic tupperware use pyrex don't use plastic cooking utensils don't use non-stick pans just go back to like what your grandparents use kind of old school kind of stainless steel wood things like that so generally don't food and plastic keep away from each other and definitely don't put food with plastic and then heat it that's even worse probably like 10 times worse and certain foods like boiling a bag of rice two minute rice put it in the microwave what do you think's happened to that plastic packaging it's leaching into that food and you've got things like um, those chickens like roast chicken you put in the, the oven it's like a chicken in a bag you may as well be eating chicken chips and plastic that's your dinner another thing most people don't know is that sea salt has quite high levels of microplastics again because our oceans are so polluted so see anything from the sea cup of salt is going to have higher levels so what you want to do is choose rock salt it has still has a little bit of microplastic but it's less than your sea salt and as for things like table salt well you can bet your ass they're not cleaning that for microplastics and most processed foods also is using probably most likely table salt so you're getting a double whammy there another one is hot drinks and it's not food but things like tea and especially coffee when you go out you get a takeaway coffee yeah Look at the lining, it'll be plastic. So when that boiling coffee goes into the cup, that plastic leaches, not millions, not billions, but trillions of plastic particles into that coffee. So if you're drinking two, three, four, five cups of coffee a day, you're drinking so much plastic with it. You'll be careful those tea bags, they can be made They can be made using plastic, even if it says biodegradable. So I just tend to use loose tea, it's just easier and better. So most of it you can see can be avoided by home cooking and preparing your own food. But still, keep eat healthy, sleep well, exercise. All these things are going to protect you from the damage that these things do anyway okay, let me know down below if that was an eye opener or if there's anything anything i missed out i'm sure i missed something anything that you do to reduce your uh, exposure so yeah until the next one